Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, busy waiting is a term that you hear as you move on to you know, slightly more complex areas in computer science, but it actually describes something that is fairly fundamental. It's something you want to avoid at higher levels, but you know, when you just want to cobble something together, busy waiting might be something you want to do. So let's take a look at what it actually is and what's a simple workaround to make things not as bad though still kind of bad. Here, take a look. Let's say during the execution of your program, you want it to actually wait for a little bit. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just tie up your program, get your program to, you know, be stuck somewhere until a certain amount of time has passed. Here's a very contrived example to show you this in action. What I have here is an Arduino. You can ignore everything except the yellow LED. This LED is blinking, and as it turns out, in order to achieve this, well, the code is extremely simple. All you have to do is to first turn the LED off, wait for a short amount of time, turn it on, wait for a short amount of time, and continue. Since this is in a loop, well, it's gonna keep doing this forever. The delay function that you're seeing here has already been implemented for us we can easily write our own variant. Now, let's go ahead and call this busy wait. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in a duration. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build just a loop. And the idea is, well, this loop is going to tie things up. Of course, we're gonna have to find out when to stop. How this works is, well, we get our current time and we add the duration to it. This function here, millis, basically gives us the current time in milliseconds. By adding the wait duration to that, well, the time we get here would be the actual timing in which the loop can stop. Therefore, all we have to do in our loop is to keep checking the current time, and basically seeing if it has ever gotten to our end time. If it has, we are done, and we should stop looping. To see this in action, we simply replace our delay statements with the busy wait command we've just written. So yeah, basically tying up your program in a loop is called busy waiting. And I think the meaning is quite apparent here. You're just making your program run around in circles, you know, forever busy until the time has passed. And that's why it gets the name busy wait. This is bad for a plethora of reasons. Firstly, of course, you are giving unnecessary stress to your CPU. And generally, while your program is busy waiting, those cycles are basically wasted. You cannot use them towards, you know, something that could be more useful. If you're working with things like embedded electronics, that would also be a waste of power because the CPU is working very hard, but not really doing anything as a result. So that is why, you know, at higher levels, we want to avoid busy waiting. The proper solution to this would be to do some kind of multitasking thing, right? Everything is in its own process. You know, while this process is waiting, is sleeping, we let the other processes do their work. Of course, if you don't want to sort of enter the realm of parallel computing, well, you don't have to. Instead, basically, your busy wait needs to be able to call some other logic. Let's return to our Arduino setup to see how this works. Basically, I have an Arduino here hooked up to two LEDs and a switch. The yellow LED will continue to blink and the red LED is supposed to light up when the switch is pressed. With our naive code, notice how late, well, the red LED actually takes to respond. And in fact, if I were to press really quickly, notice that some presses are completely missed. Watch. See, no response at all. If I were to press and hold, eventually the LED comes on, but it stays on for a while. The reason why this happens will become apparent when we actually look at the code. You see, here's what's happening. We're telling the LED that's supposed to blink to basically go on and off, which, well, is a blinking action. Only when we're done with that, do we actually check the button. This code simply checks to see if the button has been pressed, and if it has, switch the LED on otherwise switch it off. As you can imagine, since this takes one second to run, this 
will only run once a second, and that explains the delay. Let's go ahead and add our own busy waiting loop back into the mix. The difference between doing things using our own busy waiting loop is that we can add our own logic into the loop itself. Basically, the loop is just going to run whatever is inside constantly until the time is up. What this means is we still have a chance to handle our button logic. In fact, if I were to simply cut and paste the code here, well, it's going to make a world of difference. The program is no longer waiting idly at these times because, well, instead of doing that, it is running a little bit of logic, namely checking the button. Let's see what difference that makes to our physical setup. When we've included the LED handling code as part of the busy wait, notice how that, well, the light is completely responsive now, no matter how quickly or when I actually push the button. Again, this is a simple workaround. It's not sort of the perfect way to do it, but in a pinch, it sort of gets you by. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been busy waiting in a nutshell. That's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV on nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.